just get dark in here Ooh. welcome to the show you poltergeist porking pringle picklers <laughs> welcome to grunt speak live from the lair i'm gleep glap that's floop de doo and we have a ginger hamster in the house or a ginger assassin as the case would that's be. correct all right so I, what you're wearing a I've jedi got... robe with a butcher knife mm-hmm. yeah well you know it's, uh, everybody's got their thing why not <laughs> yeah why the fuck not and today we're going over your stories spooky stories the spooky paranormal stuff you guys emailed in. If you have stories that you haven't sent in yet, please do it. Yes, these we're going to try to do this, you know, once or once every two months or so or, or more. Yeah, you know, I mean, a few times a year at least because we get a lot of these. I didn't realize how many of them we had until I said, send me what you got and I'll collate it. And then I was like, oh, shit, I've got like five, six stories here. And then, so we may not even get through them all tonight. Yeah, we probably won't. We probably won't. But how you been doing over there, hamster, besides muting your microphone? Uh, you know, I just coughing again because oh, yeah. I, I told you the story. I had to work and I, 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 I'm not drinking. That's the biggest problem. <laughs> the biggest problem. <laughs> you know, Arnold always. 
That was a twofer. <laughs> Why? The, the penis straw hit the more cock button. <laughs> oh no! The <laughs> penis straw. That is now, y'all. You want to talk about some paranormal shit right there? <laughs> <laughs> I bet the ghost got in the door, and that's why it hasn't opened, and it's just been waiting for you to hit me with this and poke at that fucking Ooh. button. And now, thanks to a fan of the show, we have flesh-colored dongs. <laughs> All right. Just so Good. I can hit him right in his fucking grunt mouth. Uh, you, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Yeah, like, this house, the lair, is, I would say, uh, minorly haunted. A little mm. bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, other really? than the door opening, I mean, that that's disturbing. But every once in a while, I hear, like, a kid run through here. Not a big deal. Yeah. You mean like little footprints? Or yeah, footsteps? Like you hear the d -d 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 -d. and it's d -d -d. like maybe five or six steps. It's not like it, you know, it goes slow. It literally sounds like a little kid, you know, running by real quick. Is it like the same area of the house every it's time? Right, it's right in this area here. Some, oh, I heard okay. it over in that area too. Uh, hmm. yeah, uh, hmm, nothing upstairs though. Nothing upstairs. No. Well, you did a lot of. Uh, a lot more renovation and stuff upstairs when you got here. So, well, yes and no, because there were things in the attic that were not not a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you moved in. Oh well, no, that's like one of the reasons I bought this is the attic used to be a, a secret marijuana grow house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, it was literally the selling point because we're going through the whole the house. The real estate agent, he's just like, yeah, there's some stuff in the attic. I have to disclose it. Some stuff. I'm like, get the ladder. I go up there. And what exactly is this? I go, I think they were growing marijuana. All right, this is sold. Yeah, this is my house now. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> just go. Cool. Every time you're just a little too stressed, you just pop your head through the attic hatch, take a few deep breaths, and all of a sudden you're hungry. You don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's enough left over to, to get you going. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, I mean, if I want to go and have all of the wiring and everything hooked up up there, I mean, I could actually put a third floor up oh, yeah. oh, really? if I wanted. Nice. So they had the whole thing, the wire and the lights and all that crap, huh? Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, cool. Most of it was torn down, but the infrastructure is still there. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Cool. <laughs> uh, Jack Dawes said that the, the kid is ghosts of child support past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had Coming my fantastic moment, and I wrote my last check last July for uh, the vaginal turds. Nothing wrong with that. And now child support is just another specter of the past. Well, you know, the thing well, is. For you, anyway. Well, uh, hang on. What what do you think is going to happen when all of the men decide, fuck it, we're not getting married, and the population crunch really starts hitting, and they're like telling these women to have more kids, and then they're going to tax us to pay for them. Yeah, the bachelor tax. Yeah. Um, that is not going to fly. No. You already got a lot of people who, you know, well, first of all, income tax is illegal. I mean, that was deemed unconstitutional mm. in the early 1910s. But we're still paying it yeah. because, you know, yeah. reasons. It's reasons, voluntary, Blake. I guess. You know. Reasons. Yeah, it's voluntary. It's totally sure. voluntary. But if you don't pay it, we will send a SWAT team to your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And that's another exactly. thing is, like, I don't make any money doing this show. And I compensate myself maybe anywhere between 8 and 12 Gs a year for what I do here. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, like, you get a lion's share of everything because you do an ass load of work. But I'm not doing this for the money. No. Right. So We're doing this for those 514 names up there. Yep. Exactly. Winning. Uh, Winning. Speaking yeah. of which, virtually every story that we are going to be telling you tonight comes from one of those numbers up on the board. I actually made sure to write down which life-saved number each one was. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one tonight actually comes from Jim. Jimmy B, not to be confused with Jimmy Bones, and he is life-saved number 482. All right. And he sent this on over a while back, and I think it just kind of slipped under the radar because it was sent back in October. But he says, uh, Dear Pop, I've been watching your videos for the past few years now and have tried to spread the word of uh, MGTOW to the younger men that I work with. Your videos did indeed save my life after a bitter and bad breakup during the middle of the, uh, the COOF outbreak. 
To be honest, you saved me from doing some bad stuff to a few people. I know a, a gentleman who is no longer with us who saved you from doing some bad shit to a few people. Yes, yes, he did. It's uh, it's important to be that guy just so your friends don't catch a charge. It's important to be that guy so your friends don't die. Yes, or other people. Uh, thank you for what you've done, not only for me, but for the 400-plus men that might not be here today if it weren't for your work. I salute you, sir. My letter to you today is about the paranormal video that you put out in October uh, on the 27th of 2022. <laughs> you talked about your childhood home being haunted. My family home was also haunted. I believe it was the scene of two generations of infanticide. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Really? Oh, or, you know, back what they used to just call, you know, at-home abortions. You know, mm. Because, you know, if you outlaw abortions, women will just find another way to get them. But if you outlaw guns, we'll just have a utopia, right? Yep. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're talking there's probably some uh, uh, shake and bake abortions taking place? Shake and bake. <laughs> yep. You ever seen the movie Dumplings? Don't watch it. It'll make you puke. Mm. Uh, it started with my parents bringing my older brother home from the hospital as a newborn. My oldest brother was already five at the time. Year was 1977. Like many of the parents did at the time and now, they had set up baby monitors. Ever since signs, I don't trust those things. Not more than a day after they brought my brother home, they began to hear a baby crying, but it never came over the monitors. Oh, my wow. mother rushed upstairs to see what was wrong with my mm. brother, and he was fast asleep. This happened a few more times after the next few days, and they even replaced the baby monitors, and the same thing kept happening. Mm. It, was, it only stopped once my brother was more than eight years old, or eight months old, sorry. Uh -huh. Three years later, I was born and brought into the house, and again, it started up. My mother did some digging and found out that the house had been owned by two generations of the same family. Both families had baby boys that died in the house of sudden infant death syndrome. SIDS. Uh -oh. Not to be yep. confused with SADS. Yeah. Which didn't exist until 2021. I, gee, I wonder why. Well, it, back then, I mean, the, the whole, like, cribs and sleeping yeah. arrangements, it wasn't really a big thing. And, and yeah, kids got whacked. Yeah. Yeah, sleeping studies for infants have really helped a lot yes. over the past decades. They have. Well, they used to call it like, crib death, didn't they? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God! That, that, that was one of my yeah. horrible nightmares with my children. Oh yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah I know what you mean. Me yeah. too. There was quite a few times in the middle of the night I'd like <laughs> run right in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you get so used to them waking you up. If they don't, you're like something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? See. There's silence, wake man. Up. <laughs> yeah. You wake up, you know, just stumbling through the house like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, he's fine. You know, yeah, it always sounds like Arnold is trying to tell Muslims how to eat. <laughs> I don't know why that just came to mind. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember that there was somebody, uh, uh, one of my social media groups actually had to post a conversation because a Muslim dude came up to his barbecue truck and asked if the, the pulled pork was halal. There you go. <laughs> And you wonder why people make fun of your religion. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, all, all of every single religion we have, it, it, they're they're all wonky. They all have some things that you can yeah. point at and be like, eh, you're I little mean, little. you have the well. First of all, let's finish the story, okay? Because uh, I could talk about religious crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know you could. You've read all the books. Uh, out behind the house, when I was only ten, my older brother and I found a very old human nose bone. When I was around 15, there was an incident where a storage room door would open up at around 0300 at an almost regular basis, and the cat I had at the time would always hear it and go investigate. One morning, when I finally got the balls to do so, I went after my cat to make sure nothing was hurting him. I found him curled up in the storage room on a jacket, just purring away. Huh. He was acting like someone was giving him attention. Oh, okay. Seeing as hmm. nothing was hurting him, I just let it be. Yeah, yeah, okay. Years later, mm. when my best friend had his second child, a boy, he brought him over to visit and have some dinner with the family. It was only about two hours after they left that evening that I heard a baby crying. I want to say that I'm sensitive to some type of this phenomenon. In my mid-20s, I did a lot of paranormal research into spirits and more so UFOs. Mm. My own experiences have been more based around those whom I've lost in life. One person that came back to me is my oldest brother, who was killed in a car accident. Oddly, he somehow knew he wasn't going to live long. Our last conversation a week before his accident 
was what he wanted me to do with his belongings if something happened to him. It mm. happens a yeah, lot. Yeah. A few days after he died, I did see his spirit and actually communicated with him. I asked him a few questions and got direct answers. Two of my questions were, is there a heaven and is there a hell? What he said to me was quite interesting. My next incident was a week before my best friend, that my dog, that was my dog, died. I saw my father in a dream. He had passed away some three years before, and I had never had a dream of him before. He told me that my friend would be leaving soon, but would not be gone. We actually spoke about things. He looked not as I last remembered him, but as he was when he was around my own age, oddly enough. That's very common. Yeah. 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 After my dog passed, I was crushed in a bad dis- depression for several days. I was laying in my bed one night, and I felt him jump off the bed and walk across my legs to lie down next to me. You can say it was just a memory or my sorrow, but I felt the weight of his paws and was wide awake when it happened. The next couple of days, I would wake up, and there next to me on the bed was his impression. One night, I had another dream of my father again, and he talked to me. A noise at the foot of my bed awakened me. The noise was that of a dog pawing at the carpet like they do before they lay down. I patted the bed and told him to come up. The foot of the bed pressed down with weight, and then I felt him cuddle up to me. I looked at the clock to make sure I was awake and not dreaming. The time was 0330. Outside temp was 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside was 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I reached down to touch him, and my open hand came in contact with what felt like as if I was touching arm hair barely. My dog sat up because I not only did I feel him, but he felt me and scooted up close to my chest and laid against me. At this point, I tried to give him a hug like I always did when he was alive, and I actually felt something there. Mm. I can only describe it as trying to hug and hold water, solid yet not. It lasted for a few seconds, and then he was gone. I still see him from time to time because I suffer from really bad sleep apnea. Uh, That shit, that sucks. Yeah, At times, I actually stopped breathing in my sleep. The sleep study I had done showed that my oxygen levels dipped down to 70 at times. Not good. That's bad. That's nope. a recipe for a heart attack later in life. Get yourself a CPAP machine, good yeah. sir. Yep. Yep. I know my dog is on the other side because one night I had a dream where I went to a really beautiful place and I saw my boy. He was super surprised to see me, came right up to me and licked me in the nose. He nice. played a little bit and then something called for him and he walked me out of the area and I woke up. My nose was actually wet. Hmm. This has happened to me a few times, and I keep thinking of your videos often talking about the lobby. (laughs) I fully believe you're right. After the first two times, he's not been really surprised to see me, but he always walks me back to this area. I often feel him around me. You may not believe what I have had to say, but I feel you're an open-minded person, and you have seen the lobby. This has probably given you some ability to be more in touch with the other side than most. I, I, I imagine it does. Yeah. And then this last bit here. Right, hang on one minute. i got to get a cup. Oh, you got to get a cup. I didn't, I didn't get a cup. i got to drink my stuff. Oh, okay. So your herbal tea is done steeping. Yes. You're steeping. Mm-hmm. You, you're done tea bagging. Your, your herbal tea. <laughs> <laughs> I dip my nuts in your herbal tea, you wanker. Oh. <laughs> we have flesh-colored straws now, thanks to one of yes, you mother do. fornicators out there. Did you I, model for the straw then? Oh, uh, no. I, I hit Pop in the face with a whole bag of them yesterday while we were filming. <laughs> like that. <laughs> objected. <laughs> you objected, and I overruled you because that's how I roll. <laughs> you you got to put that in the outtakes. Because I'm just saying comedy's comedy, and you need to be down for a laugh if you're going to call yourself a comedian, good sir. So in the end, you made the right decision. All right. As I pelted you in the face with phallic objects. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> hey, my parents were married, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, you spoke about your fishing trip to an area where I actually live and work in the Finger Lakes area. This area is actually a UFO hotspot. I've been there before myself, and you are telling the truth about how all noise stops in that area. At 100%. Times. 100%. Not sure if you knew this or not, but north of that location in a small town called Romulus, there's a place called the Seneca Army Depot. This is where, for a long time, all the nuclear weapons that were put onto ships, aircraft, or whatever were stored and maintained right there. I have worked with a few older guys that worked there. One of them actually worked on the weapons. And after a few years of talking to them and getting their trust, I actually did get them to tell me some of their stories about seeing some odd things while working there. I've been in communication with uh, with David Politis, 
who was up in the Adirondack Mountains on top of Mount Marcy, I did hear the sound of a middle door closing near me when I was in the Boulder Field. He's a good guy and will talk to you if you reach out to him. His research is for real. He deals only with facts and no bullshit. If you ever need help with any paranormal research or anything at all, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. All right. I have some stories on UFOs if you want to go down that rabbit hole. Don't believe half the crap you see the mainstream guys put out, though. There's yeah. sellouts or working off of bad intel. Now, I just yeah. have to say, um, there, you said you asked your father questions, but then you didn't give it. I want to know the answers. <laughs> He said yeah. it was it was interesting. Let's move on. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, now, if it's too personal, I got it. But yeah. if it, if you can share that, please email it to us because I think that is, uh, I think that's important stuff. Yeah, help us out here, Jimmy B. We want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, and well, listen, especially about the heaven and hell stuff. Right? Yeah, I mean that's that's. Hey, dude, tell us what's going on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know. Good stuff. I never got beyond the lobby, so I yeah. can't. I'm, I'm glad. But ever since then, or should I say, but ever since then, you've been seeing lots of crazy shit. Well, did you see crazy shit before that, or is it just since your near death experiences? Well, no, I've seen stuff before. It, it wasn't like just the the uh, you know getting knocked out of my body. I wouldn't even say that was a near death thing. Well, it sure fuck sounds like it. Well, I, I was literally the bomb went off. I was looking at the top of the car from about 30 or 40 feet above, and it literally la it felt like it lasted eight or ten hours. Really? And then when I came back to the car, it had been like a fraction of a second. Yeah, I would hmm. call that a near-death experience. <laughs> okay. okay. Anybody else out there have similar stories, send them on to us. Linktree is in the meat gazer box. Caught you looking. Yeah, and you know what? Um, like, I watch all kinds of videos about near death uh, experiences or uh, what do you do in between lives and all of that you know crazy stuff and mm -hmm. there is a lot of similarities in all of these NDE stories yeah you know the tunnel of light mm -hmm. um, it, it, every person has like individual visions that are tailored to them but there's always a uh, how should I, it boils down to like everything's like a moral question or answer. Yeah. Yeah. So this was requested in the chat. So every time we, we start a new story, I have to do a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? I, I should probably <laughs> reach out to Paulitis and uh, Man, send him that video that I did years ago. Heck yeah. Why not? About, yeah. And, and like, When that happened, I knew I was fucked <laughs> because, like, it literally, I was feeling like I was on a on a combat battlefield and like, enemy eyes were upon me. Yeah, and I st I literally stood there with my back against this huge tree. It was like three or four feet wide, all night, hmm. in absolute pitch black, and deafening silence. Just yeah. You get so used to hearing certain things that when they're gone, you really, really notice. Oh, I, I picked up on it right away. Yeah. Because, okay. like, I got the fire going. I was heating up some mocha. And all of a sudden, eh, it's like, eh, 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 ow. and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was a couple months ago I, after <laughs> we were done streaming. I went home, and I remember I, you know, grabbed a couple things out of the car, and then all of a sudden I'm on my way to the back door, and I'm like, there's no traffic. Mm -hmm. Like, where the hell's the traffic sound? The only thing I could hear was like the dryer vent for my own house. Mm. Really? Everything else was dead quiet. <laughs> yep, that yep. Is yeah. Weird. I mean, but, we live in the suburbs. We're not too far from a major expressway, so to not hear any traffic at ten o'clock at night was really weird. That is yeah. weird. It is weird. But you know, shit happens, man. Yeah, shit happens indeed. Uh, well, I mean, speaking I've of seen some of those stories where people go through, they claim they go through like a <clears throat> a dimensional portal or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where they go through, they're driving, and all of a sudden everything is different. They don't, there's no noise, the sky is different, and all kinds of weird shit. I mean, who knows, right? Yeah, those just, stories are out there. Well, I'm actually so. working on a science fiction story about a guy who uh, can travel between like two or three of our nearby Earths. 
that oh, are really? very similar. Hmm. They're just uh, there's little little uh, tweaks in the timeline. It's very similar. Like each each world is within like one or two decades, hmm. and then some of them have uh, you know gone to do different things. So I don't know. I'm still putting that together. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, It'd be kind of interesting to have different Earths where you you had a big decision to make. And you made a decision, and then you go to the other Earth, and you made the other decision. Yeah, the multiverse theory. Kind of see what happened. Yeah, the multiverse. Yeah, right. I think exactly. that'd be cool. Kind of like everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, I mean, uh, you know, that's the whole thing with that multiverse thing is that if indeed infinite and all, you know, you know the game, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I got so you. So if if everything is infinite, then somewhere somebody is sitting here having a chat, just like whoever we are, yeah. and they look just like us. It's crazy. Or yeah. it could just be us. I, I or it could be us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've told all my, you know, supernatural stories. I have quite a few. I'm I think sure there was like three forgot. or four videos on there. At least, yeah. But uh, like now I, uh, I, I'm putting together some other uh, stories that have been sent in <laughs> about apparitions. Okay. Because mm. I, what I saw at Ranger School, you can always say, yeah, but you hadn't slept properly in like five days and you haven't eaten in two days. Mm. So you, it, it could be explained away as that. Could be. It, it could be. The only thing that threw me off is when I was like a year and a half later, I was in Special Forces Selection. A guy in the next bunk, exact same story. Because mm. if, if I had not heard that guy, I would have thought it was just a hallucination. No, oh, I bet. But he literally had the exact, almost the exact same thing. He got separated from the patrol. Some RIs came. Helped, you know, they guided him where he needed to be. But nobody saw them except him. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So these, these, these the guys came and helped you, but they don't exist. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because the thing is, it's like I'm literally on the uh, edge of the swamp in England Air Force Base. And I'm like, I know that the mission was completed. I know that, you know, in the actual swamp, when you're moving by yourself, you, you move way slower mm. than in a group. So I knew they had made it back, but I didn't know where they, I didn't know where they were. And literally, I'm like looking around, and now before I know it, there's like these guys like, hey, Ranger, what's up? I'm like, hey, if you see a patrol come by, he's like, hey, just follow that sand trail up, and uh, your security's right up there. The guy was on the machine gun, saw me come out of the swamp, Walk right up to him, and then he goes, "How the hell did you fucking walk right up?" And I go, oh, "Those are eyes down there." He goes, "Dude, I saw you come out of the swamp. There was no, there was nobody down there, because <laughs> he had the night vision on and everything. I saw jack shit, just you." Wow. And I was like, "Ah, it's probably hallucinating." Oh yeah, totally. It Jeez. happens. Wow. It's crazy stuff, man. Well, I mean, certainly if you're deprived of food, sleep, all yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that's got to do something. I mean, oh, kids, yeah. we've all been tired driving. We see shit, right? No, I, I, I mean, I, I was having minor hallucinations. Most yeah. of them was audio. Because, Just minor. Yeah, yeah, when you go without sleep, the first thing that starts going is your hearing. And then it starts affecting your vision. Mm. And if you still get fucking really stupid, then it just gets it goes worse from there. Lovely. Yeah, and <laughs> I, was, like, I was so tired. As soon as the sun would go down... I would have this voice in my ear, like, pop, pop, pop. So I'd be like, what? What? <laughs> what? And finally, somebody walks up, grabs me, goes, you're fucking hallucinating. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, okay. So then when people were trying to call me, I ignored them because I thought I was hallucinating. It was evil pop in the box. Pop. It was evil. Yeah, evil pop. Pop. I don't know. Bit chocolate chip ice cream. It's 3 a.m. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> we're hungry. <laughs> No, I agree with the ears because, you know, obviously I'm not a, a ranger, you know, but, you know, people do get tired, not overly tired, but, you know, you're up 18 hours or whatever. Yeah. And I know for me personally, your ears start doing weird shit. Yep. Like, it, you'll hear like a fan running, and I, what I hear myself is a fa like just a fan blowing, and I'll hear like this music, like an orchestra playing. It's just the weirdest damn thing. Ah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, your, your, your brain's kind of, eh. There's, There's stuff always going on in a weird shit. There's always something going on in your thinking meat. Yes. Always. Yep. But speaking of the orchestra playing, uh, I asked the hamster to actually read the next story that we have, and it comes from Old Storm Cloud, Life Saved number 445. You ready over there, hamster? 
I am ready. Lay it on us. Remember, no names. Nope, no names. <laughs> but uh, hey, thanks, Bob, for what you do, and thanks to this guy for still being with us. Really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Okay, here's the story. Greetings, gentlemen. I originally posted this on Hammer Hands channel. Hammer. 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 A couple weeks ago, regarding living with the specter of death, I felt what I had written encapsulates my origin story, so to speak, on how I came to your channel, Pop's channel. <clears throat> I have re-edited this several times, hope it makes sense. Okay. So the story begins. My eldest stepdaughter passed away oh. over... 10 years ago, Oof. yeah. 25th September 2012, 9.23 a.m., from cancer. Oh, man. That's a rough one. Yeah. She was 12 years old. Oh, my That's, God. God. Oh, man. That's tough. That's a it tough is very one, tough. That date and time is seared into my brain. It would be for all of us, yeah. Wow. The months, weeks, and days before she passed were difficult and trying time. Putting immense pressure on my marriage, which, truth be told, was brittle for a while at that stage. But we persevered. There were four other kids to think of, three more stepkids, and a young man of my own I had with my wife. My stepdaughter's diagnosis and treatment was swift and incredibly bewildering to everyone. Yep. We were told it was stage four and inoperable. Damn. Damn. Wow. We never told her or her siblings or cousins. Only the adult family members knew. <clears throat> From that moment... We understood the clock was ticking. Being in England, we have the NHS, which I am incredibly grateful for in her case. They were excellent in providing care for her, even the children's hospice, where she stayed for days on and on and on and was exceptional. So the NHS did uh, did good for the kid. Man, stage four, that's a 12-year-old kid. For 12, damn. That's just yeah. Jesus. <clears throat> you know, it's stuff like that that... Uh, well, we could talk about religious religion later, but you know yeah. why? Why yeah. a twelve year old kid? Yeah, you know? I don't know. Okay. Shit happens, man. That's it. Really does. I know. I know. <clears throat> I have always believed in the paranormal. Days before she passed away, there were a few incidents that occurred. My stepdaughter seeing an old lady with glasses and a brown cardigan sitting on her bed. She described her great grandmother, but had never seen a photo of her. All a right. strong scent of lavender randomly manifesting. That her is great so grandmother's too. That is yes. so common. Yeah. Uh, after my uncle Mike uh, passed away in 2001, randomly around like everybody who was close to him, his daughters, uh, his widow, and, and around our house even, you'd randomly get a, a smell of medicine. Yeah. Because this is a dude mm, who was yep. very ill for most of the latter half of his life. You know, diabetes, numerous. He had blood clots so bad. That the blood clots had blood clots? That the blood clots had blood clots, wow. yeah. It was almost like he got a certain stunning and brave, you know, totally safe vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. But, Fauci yeah. juice. Yeah. yeah. They would come out like this long from his leg. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's bad. So, yeah. Sorry Jesus. about that. Go, go ahead, hamster. This is a good one. No, I was going to say, I, I agree totally. My, my grandmother used to say that. Yeah. You know, she'd be walking around the house and, ah, I smell that. That's your yeah. old grandma, you know, yep. or her mother. Yeah. And it's like, no, I, of course, I'm a kid. I didn't know anything. I, I get the and same the, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every and then years later, you know, I'm just doing something in the house. All of a sudden, that's my grandmother. What the hell? It's yeah. really weird. Now, here's the weird thing. Like, my grandfather on my father's side, like, you wouldn't ever see him without a huge cigar in his face oh yeah, mm. yeah. I, I hate cigars yeah I, I, but every once in a while i'll be driving my car and there'll be it'll smell like a cigar in there i'm like ah, get, get that smoke out of here motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me too sometimes every once in a while i'll get in the car and i'll smell like axle grease and old spice i'm like dad what the fuck you doing here yeah you, you, you never come around anymore <laughs> yep. why does it all got to be my car <laughs> i don't know it's just it's weird. I mean, you know, it, it <clears throat> it's you, you have it's in your memory, right? Yeah. So you get that certain combination. It's like boom. There's there's dad or there's grandma. It's pretty well, crazy. Yeah, and another thing is like certain odors trigger deep memories. Yes. Yeah. Mm, very much. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Something yeah. cooking or some you know. Yeah. Oh. 
even some weird you smell some cow shit it's like oh my god yeah that's what smelled like the time we were in vermont or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> cow shit oh i hated that woman why did i have why did i ever <laughs> date her <laughs> damn it i drank too much that night so, ah, let's, balls. All right, let's, let's, let's finish the story <laughs> okay Anyway, strong scent of lavender randomly manifesting great grandmother's favorite perfume. Yes. Yeah. And randomly switching on a kettle, her great grandmother used to love a cup of tea. Even though there was no one in the kitchen, was her great grandmother preparing the way for her? I believe so. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so apparently the daughter was home and saw this old lady, which is yeah. <laughs> interesting. Okay. He continues, I won't go into detail about her passing. That's still too difficult for me to comprehend even after all this time. I can only imagine. Yeah. But when you hear life in one room and see only death in another, especially when it's a child's, you cannot fathom it. It makes no sense at all. Even though you can see the end coming, it still leaves you unprepared for the inevitable. God, you are true. never prepared. I'll never. tell you right no. now. Nope. Doesn't <clears throat> matter how much forewarning you get. Yeah. Right. It's almost a blessing in some ways to just gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then it's just, it's going to, you know, my, my grandmother's like that, right? Yeah. Just keeled over, you know, good yeah. for her. That's all I want. Yeah. She made it to 84. You know, that's not bad. That's, that's a good, damn good run. run, man. Damn good run. Yep. It's strange now seeing some of her former school friends with children of their own. So this was certainly you know, 2012, I believe. So yeah, it's been quite a while mm -hmm. with her. We'll never know what could have been only what is. My son has a photo of her. He was barely two when she passed, and she adored him. And he's going to ex exceed to an age where she never will. He understands death more than many in his peer group. Mm. Fast forward to present day. I have separated from her mother now for five years, officially divorced for three. Our relationship had lasted for another five years after my stepdaughter's passing, but it had been on life support for a long time. Add the aforementioned brittle quality. You probably get the picture. Yep. Yeah. Even oh, a strong, yes, we do. Yeah, even a strong marriage can usually most not survive the, time, the death of a child. Yeah, a, a right. child burns in. It's over most yep. of the time. Yeah, and he said they were kind of on shaky ground to begin with. Yeah, and this yeah. tragedy comes along. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he played Captain save -ho, and then the, apparently this was his reward. No good deed goes unpunished, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. That's right. Oh. Yep. She never took the grief counseling offered. It showed she grew bitter and resentful, her temper getting worse. After a while, you're walking on eggshells. Oh, God, we've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And that, Ugh, that scary grief, stuff. The grief counseling doesn't work. That's, it's, just, no. it's nothing but, uh, you know, drapes on a house. It's, it's, not, it's yeah, unnecessary. It, it's like anything else. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. You know, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it does help people to talk. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, I got you. So, yep. After a while, you're walking in eggshells, never knowing what would trigger her next. It became hell. Over time, it erodes any love and compassion you have for a person. I sure felt that way. Only staying for the sake of my son. Maybe she also felt that way. I know I'll never get a straight answer from her. Yeah, probably not. No. <clears throat> anyway. She's since remarried her third at the age of 42. <laughs> wow. God. Oh, no. Uh, what? Oh, what? Oh, oh, man. Who's going to want to? That, that's. Yeah. Okay, I'll Damn. just put this up here. Okay, we're going to have to go with a big fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever wiped her up <laughs> needs help. Yeah. Woo. He's going to need uh, grief counseling. I would say. Yeah. That's fucked up. And 42. 42. <laughs> hey, you know oh, what? My. I know a chick who was divorced three times by 40. Mm. Damn. Yeah, she's a real winner, and that HSV2 has really got him lining up around the block. That's why she lies about it. Yep. Um, I mean, what would possess a person? 42, divorced a couple times. What? I don't know. I, there's a guy I who mean, watches this show who's been married six times, and he's like, oh, yeah, oh. your guys' content is great. I was like, did you learn anything from it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's a comedy show, but I mean, there's there's truth in here, guy. You, you should listen a little more carefully, maybe. Yeah, six yeah. times, holy. Well, holy we know shit. what this guy would say if you talked to him. Why did you marry? Well, she different. <laughs> she, loves, she, loves she loves me. me. <laughs> <laughs> she good people. She good people. She knows how to swallow. <laughs> is is this an older guy, by the way? 
<laughs> I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's actually next paragraph here. He says he's 48. Oh, okay. I meant the uh, guy who got married six times. But, uh, oh, no, the guy who got married six times? He's in his 50s. Yeah. Maybe early yeah, 60s right. now. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because I think there's a, there's a different attitude with the slightly older generation. You know, yeah. they think they have to be married for some reason. It's, like, yeah. come on. <laughs> it's called Jesus. marriage moronship. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> uh, anyway, so she got married for the third time at the age of 42. And I hope for my son's sake, this one will last. He gets on well with a stepdad. That's good. That's, 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 that's plus, positive. Yeah. And still sees me regularly, which is excellent. Yes. It's a better arrangement than some poor souls have. Oh, God, we, that. we know that. As for myself, I'm living with my folks at the age of 48. I had nothing except the clothes on my back when my relationship ended. Quote, didn't have a pot to piss in, let alone a window to throw it out of. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep. As the saying goes, I battled depression in the aftermath and won with the help from a certain army grunt named Terrence Pop. Yeah, all right. Woo! All right. He says, I'm officially number 445 on the chalkboard. That's right. Congratulations, sir. My life is now free from drama on a daily basis. I haven't been with anyone since my split, believing that being there for my boys surpasses anything else. You're and damn I believe right. you are Absolutely correct. correct. Yep. Damn right. He continues. <clears throat> my folks are aging out, but I'm here to help in whatever way I can. My son does his bit where he can. As an addendum, my full red pilling moment came when I visited an old friend, Bob. Bob, who I hadn't seen in years. This was November 2017. Over a month, my relationship ended. What? Over a month? Over the month, my relationship. Okay. All right. I kind of. Uh, I'm there. Uh, I'm good. Okay. I allowed my wife to isolate me from my friends. Ooh. Does that sound familiar, anyone? Uh-huh. 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 Testiculus redonculitis. <laughs> Isolate me from my friends and family over the years, and I count myself blessed and luckily, lucky they understood the situation I was in. Not many other people would be so merciful. There's so much I could have done better whilst in that relationship and utterly blue-pilled. That's hindsight for you. I've been told I beat myself up too much, but that's what we do. I'm not sure he could have done anything. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing but, you could have done about it, man. You know, you can't beat yourself up like that, man. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But that, that you has got to learn from it and move on. Yeah, yeah, and like guilt is a bitch. Mm -hmm. that, that causes a lot of suicides as yes, well. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I spent uh, way too many months. What did I do wrong? Why did this woman leave me? Never again. No. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's just she, she, they made their minds up, and that's it. Exactly. They're gone. I mean, by the time she leaves you, and this is no shit, we all know it, they, she's already been planning for six months. At they, least. She's got to figure it out. At least. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do at that point. So. Nope. Anyway, continuing. Bob has been a subscriber of yours for years, and he said in a calm tone whilst drinking a large tumbler of whiskey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch this. It was one of your videos. <laughs> I always watch on a regular basis. The Guide to Shit Testing. Yeah, yes! I love that episode. Yeah. Classic, classic. That was classic pop with the uh, the other basement on it. Yeah, it was in the other basement. I think that was one of our first videos behind the bar. It might have been. Yeah. yeah. And one of those shit testing uh, things was one that I added in because you gave me your, your thing. And it, how it always goes is he brings me an outline and I'm going through and I was like, dude, you forgot one of the best ones of all. <laughs> He's like, what? I was like, the pregnancy scary. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I got to wipe that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep me honest, man. I like yep. it. Yep. That's uh, good shit right there. I'm Yeah, you get that text message. You know, you're in the middle of work. Oh. I'm late. Late to what? Mm -hmm. Work? Oh, I'm late. Oh, oh great. Yeah. When were you supposed to start? This morning? You're not late. You're shit testing. We're broken <laughs> up. See you later. <laughs> uh. Oh God! Yes, yes, I've <laughs> I've been there, I've been mm -hmm. there. <laughs> anyway, right, so finish this. Let's get this done. Get right. her done. Get her done. Uh, your your accuracy, Pop, was frightening to the point where I thought, did this drunken grunt have a surveillance <laughs> camera in my house? You know how many times I've heard that? <laughs> I, I have heard that dozens of times from my own soldiers. Like, 
I'm like, I remember I'm showing this one video. I don't remember which one it was in a classroom, and I have like a company of soldiers, and this guy in the back is like, "He was fucking there. He had to been there. <laughs> that exactly happened to me." <laughs> That's how it goes, man. And that's why we tell you guys to send in your stories because you never can tell, no matter how crazy your story might be, somebody out there has lived something very similar. Yes. And having mm-hmm. that outside perspective can make something click and save a life. Yes, it can. I mean, it's not like you had a surveillance camera there. You lived it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Here's the, uh, here's the paranormal bit. Okay. All right. My son had been visited by his sister after her passing. Oh, that's very common, too. Yeah. Yeah. Three prominent incidents. It was just over a month after she passed away. I believe she made sure her presence was felt. It was my son's second birthday. Just as he blew out the candles on his cake with everyone singing happy birthday, a resounding thud emanated from above us, silencing everyone instantly. It came from the room my eldest stepdaughter shared with her sisters. I went upstairs to see what had caused the sound, expecting to see a large object in the middle of the room that could have fallen from a bookshelf. No windows were open. Everyone was accounted for downstairs. There was nothing on the floor that could have caused such a sound. That was unsettling. My then father-in-law said she is saying happy birthday to her little brother and doesn't want to be left out. Ah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's uh, that's something. Yeah. yeah. Fast forward over a year later to when he was barely three years old, almost to the anniversary of her passing, that he saw. Let's see, <clears throat> that we saw him sitting on the stairs one day, visibly upset, stated, stating she was crying. I hugged him and asked him why. What he said chilled me. "Quote: All the flowers have gone." I realized it was a Thursday. That's when the crematorium clears their flower beds of all the bouquets, cards, etc. Uh, wow. That's a chilling one right there. Yeah, ooh. He says, I still have goosebumps thinking about that. Yeah, yeah join I'm the getting club. goosebumps right now. <laughs> you can join the club. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Another time was at the same crematorium on the anniversary of her passing. My son was nearly four. He was playing tag with someone who wasn't there, saying over his shoulder, can't catch me. He later said he was playing with her. All right. Yeah. Wow. So there have been other moments when she has made her presence felt, either to my son or her mother, but these have been fleeting. Now my boy is nearing his teens. He said he hasn't seen her in years. He recently said to me she used to sit on his bed and talk to him when he was younger. It saddens me to no end that he hasn't seen her since. I simply told him she loved him and wanted to make sure he was all right and everyone else in the family. I hope she has moved on and found peace. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty yeah, amazing stuff. So. And, yeah. And look, um, you can't really feel bad because they, they stop visiting. Because they stay long enough to see that you're okay. Yeah. And they go on to do whatever they got to do on the other side of the lobby. Yeah. Just like any, I mean, that's Let's usually not. how it works. Yeah, I mean, there 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 could be rules too. It's like you can only go down for a little while, then you yeah, gotta yeah there back are, it off. You know? There's probably an ass ass load of rules. Yeah, and I know I'm gonna break many of them and get in super trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we made a mistake, Pop. You're Ooh. going downstairs. <laughs> yeah, you're going downstairs. You're going back to the lobby. You fucking grunt. get in the elevator. <laughs> Actually, you're gonna man the elevator, and we're gonna make you talk like Droopy Dog. <laughs> Your floor, sir. <laughs> I was a green beret. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? It is what it is. Wow, yeah, these these stories are great. I, I yeah. love these. I like the stories. And we have another one here. This one comes from Life Saved Number. I want to make sure that I get it correct here. Um, oh, this isn't the... This isn't the same one that I was looking for here. Uh, This comes from Solomon. This came from back in February. was sent to us. 
Uh, hello, Pop and Toxic Male. I've been following your channel for a couple of years now, and I honestly don't know anyone who is better at discussing harsh truths while also being so hilarious. I appreciate what you're doing, and you never fail to make me laugh. By the way, I think it's important to also mention that I have actually lost count how many times YouTube has automatically unsubscribed me from your channel. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that never happens. It's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, we get that mm -hmm. quite a bit. Always remember that if it ever seems like you're losing subscribers. Anyway, I'm 33, single. I have a very simple, peaceful life, which is the way I like it. I do have some pretty insane RP stories of things that I have witnessed happen to men in my family. And I also have my own story from years ago of how I dated a psycho who left me because I wouldn't hand over my debit card so she mm. could invest my money in what was obviously a pyramid scheme. Please send this story in. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't waste any time. She left me right away and immediately jumped into the arms of some really nice, wealthy blue pill guy. Oh. I'm pretty sure she was his first love. <laughs> she different. She loves me. <laughs> they got married a month later. Yeah. Mm. And then very shortly after, she divorced him and moved to Florida. <laughs> Well, then, <laughs> I will definitely share those stories in another email. However, I also have a paranormal story that I want to share, and for now, I'll stick to that. One last thing before I get to the paranormal story. My brother is a captain in the Marine Corps, and he has had Marines under him come home and commit self-deletion because of horrible stuff their wives did to them. Mm. So, like Pop, he can also attest to having to attend those funerals. Oh. It's horrible and tragic. Please keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, that's why we're here, man. S send these videos to your marine buddies because this is messed up. In 2008, while I was in Guatemala, I came face to face with an apparition. I've only shared this story with a small handful of people, and I never really planned on talking. Uh, excuse me about it so much, but I felt like sharing it with you guys. I was 19 at the time, and I had volunteered to go to Guatemala for three months on a church mission trip. I was with a group of about 12 people, and we traveled all over the country doing a variety of things, from helping landscape a school playground area to painting and repairing church buildings to helping distribute medical and hygiene supplies to people, etc. I worked construction jobs through my high school years, so because of that experience, I got stuck with a lot of the dirty grunt jobs, which I didn't mind. Hey, those dud jobs pay. Maybe not on a church mission trip, but you come back to the private sector, they pay. Yep. I sort of fell in love with Guatemala. I really appreciated the simplicity, and a lot of the people were really nice. There were plenty of young women over there that were traditional and very respectful to men, and could also cook like nobody's business. Oh, yeah. And if they're Guatemalan, they probably got asses that won't quit. <laughs> kind of like this lady. Ah. But she's a redhead, which means it'll go banana pudding in about three years. Yeah, yeah oh. 36 months, I say. Uh, no oh, offense yeah. to the ginger hamsters in the room, of course. No, no, I... I, I Totally understand your point. <laughs> I get it. Hamster's like, yeah, I remember the time that I walked in through my yeah, the bathroom no, in the no. dark and I caught a glimpse of my own ass. <laughs> well, and they <laughs> resuscitated me, and here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right, too. That actually happened to, we used to rent a room to a buddy of mine, and he got up in the middle of the night. You know, he had, the, he had a lady of the evening over or whatever he was getting out. And uh -huh. we have a huge mirror at the end of our hallway. And he was so out of it, he thought somebody was walking up on him oh, <laughs> in the hallway. Yeah. He scared the shit out of himself <laughs> and woke everyone <laughs> yeah. in the house up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that stuff. There we got here. Um, my Spanish is not very good, so unfortunately the language barrier became an issue after a very short conversation. My favorite place in Guatemala was a quiet town called San Miguel Chicage. We spent about three weeks there, and that town was really laid back and friendly. While we were there in San Miguel, one of the local pastors who coordinated with our team told us his church was spending was sending a small group to one of the indigenous villages and asked if we wanted to go along. So we did. Probably being overly cautious, but out of respect for the people, I'll keep the name of this village anonymous. It was a very large, I think he meant to say fairly, but he said, it's a very large farming village way up oh in the mountains. God. And it was very, I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> I bet they drink Bud Light there. Um, <laughs> sure they do, yes. <laughs> yeah. Most of the people in this village didn't even speak Spanish. No, they were too busy lifting. Shad, it's a fairy village. Uh, they spoke an indigenous language called Achi, or Aki, maybe. 
Uh, the pastor in San Miguel and his team all spoke Achi, and their goal was to teach Spanish to the children. They made regular trips to some of these villages and would spend a couple of days at a time there teaching the children. Knowing Spanish would allow the young people to leave the village and enable them to go to college or get better jobs elsewhere in the country. Basically, knowing Spanish was key for these kids if they wanted to do anything with their life besides live in the mountains and farm. So it was an admirable thing that this San Miguel church was doing. On this particular trip, my team was mostly just along for the ride, and the plan was to spend two days and one night and then drive back to San Miguel. We all loaded up into two large vans, and it was about a three-hour drive from San Miguel. Part of the reason it took three hours was because of the muddy, pothole-ridden, narrow road that zigzagged the mountains. We couldn't really go above 20 mile an hour for the latter half of the drive because of the conditions. Also, occasional loose livestock from a nearby farm would wander out onto the road. You, you shouldn't talk about Pop's ex-girlfriends that way. Yeah, yeah. Oh. There we go. You hog slaying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Pops coming after him with an empty lasagna tray. What gifts? Yeah, he's not lying about the road conditions down there. <laughs> oh, I bet. I've driven a lot down Probably there. worse than Cleveland. Oh, it's like they have the like the roads carved into the side of the mountains and that kind of shit, mudslides and all yeah, that. I, I uh, never oh, yeah. went on one of those roads. I, I, I would refuse. Yeah, no, no, no. I'd be like, nope, yeah. you're, you're taking me in there in a chopper. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I am not kidding on a, any kind of bus, truck, anything. Nope, not happening. Get you're, to the you're, chopper! You're flying me there. Fuck it. <laughs> you just well, I mean, the mud path the is, the, is the same size as the truck. It's like, no, yeah. I'm not doing that. Naturally. Uh, he continues here. When we finally arrived in the village, I immediately did not like it. It wasn't anything personal against the people, but I felt a heaviness in my chest as soon as we entered, and the place just felt depressing. It just wasn't me. Other people felt it, too. Some of the locals did not like us being there, either. They weren't too thrilled about the Guatemalan church members being there, teaching Spanish to the kids, either. A few of the locals were nice, but others, not so much. I decided to make the most of it, but I was glad to know we were only spending one night. The outskirts of the main village was the school building. It was a long cement and steel building with several rooms inside and a covered patio that ran the length of the building. I was wondering what such a large building was doing in such an isolated village like this. Obviously, an outside source had to have constructed it. Speaking to the locals usually required two translators. A Guatemalan pastor translated from Achi to Spanish, and then one of our team members translated from Spanish to English. That's wow. One way to make a conversation three times as long. Yep. So through two translators, we were told by some of the village elders that the large school building was built by the military during the Guatemalan Civil War and mm. used as a torture chamber during oh. the Mayan genocide. Oh, wow. From what yeah. we were told, a lot of horrible stuff happened there. But after it was over and things were cleaned up, the Guatemalan army just left the building behind. So the building, tur so the village turned it into a schoolhouse. Suddenly, it all made sense. All right. Why there mm -hmm. was a large fortified building in this hidden away village? I bet. Wow. No weird shit happens there. Yeah, so. that uh, that uh, oppressive feeling. Yep. I had that the entire time I lived at Amugra Prison. Oh, I would be shocked if you didn't. Yeah, it was it was fucking hell on earth, man. Oof. Our team leaders shortly after informed us that we would all be sleeping in the school building that night. Oh, God. I think I know where this is going. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll be fine. What's, no what's the worst that could happen? What could go wrong? <laughs> it's, it'll be different. This building loves me. I made a sarcastic statement about how I was already feeling so cheerful about this place, and I didn't think things could get any better. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> Some people didn't think it was funny. <laughs> that evening, we all ate dinner at one of the local villagers' houses. They had typical outdoor kitchen area with a roof and no walls, and that's where we all congregated and ate by the cooking fire. One of the family members broke out a guitar and played some music while we all watched the mountainous landscape get dark as night came. I have to admit, even though that village gave me a heavy feeling, that particular part of the night was very pleasant. When it all started to get really dark, we made our way down the hill from our dinner house to the school building. All the desks and chairs had been cleared in two of the classrooms for us to sleep in. We all slept in sleeping bags on a cement floor. Done all, many times. Yeah. 
All the women slept in one room, and all the guys slept in the adjacent room. As I was laying in my sleeping bag, I couldn't help but think about how many innocent people might have been tortured to death in the very room that I'm sleeping in. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, it didn't bother me that much since there were so many of us. It would have been a lot creepier if I was alone. I guess count your blessings. Yeah, yeah. We were all exhausted, and everyone fell asleep quickly, including myself. I woke up a, I woke up a couple of hours later, and I had to urinate like a racehorse. I'd been drinking a lot of water to stay hydrated, and when I awoke around 1 a.m., my bladder felt like it was going to burst. This is how I knew I was not dreaming. I was totally awake. I had to pee so bad I was as awake as awake can be. I sat up quietly, felt around for my flashlight. It was somewhere in the folds of my sleeping bag, and I didn't want to rustle around and wake people, so I gave up trying to find it. The room was totally dark, but I could see just enough moonlight seeping through the cracked window shades from the keyhole in the door to find my way out. I slowly made my way over to the door while tiptoeing around all the other guys sleeping. Finally got to the door, went outside, started briskly walking along the patio towards some bushes at the end of the building. That's when I saw someone at the other end of the building walking my way. Uh-uh. It was a partly Uh-oh. cloudy night, and the moon was out between clouds, but under the patio roof it was too dark to make out specific details. All I could see was a shadowy figure walking along the patio toward me. Mm. I stopped and thought to myself that some local Yahoo was probably coming around to try to mess with us or steal our stuff while we were asleep. That was my first thought. As I said earlier, some of the people in this village were not very friendly, and if it was one of my team members from either my group or the San Miguel Church, they would have already said something. This person walking toward me on the patio was totally silent. My bladder was still completely full, but I wasn't thinking about that anymore. I walked straight up to this guy to confront him. (laughs) I don't speak a word about cheese, so I didn't know what I was going to say, but I was going to say something. I knew it wasn't a child because the figure was about my height and I'm 5'11". I honestly thought it was just a thief lurking around. When I got within 10 or so feet of this person, I realized it was not a person. Mm -hmm. There were no facial features, and it didn't have any feet touching the ground. Whoa, all right. (laughs) It was like a shadow standing upright. Up until that point, it seemed like it didn't care about my presence. But once I got within a few feet of it, it all of a sudden stopped. And I stopped. For a split second, I was just standing there face to face with it. It all happened fast. An intense, tingling sensation ran down my entire body, and I got major goosebumps. Major goosebumps. And I could not believe what I was seeing, and major fight-or-flight reaction took over. I was freaked out, but after that split-second stare down, I got such a surge of adrenaline that I lunged at the apparition like I was going to fight it. Hopefully this went okay. Uh Well, obviously it did. You're here. Uh (laughs) Pure Mm -hmm. reaction. I had so much adrenaline going through me, and my body was tingling so hard, I didn't even feel like I was in control of my actions. The moment I lunged at it, the figure spun around and ran straight through the cement wall of the school building and disappeared. No uh, it's actually how you're supposed to handle Ooh. it. That, that is exactly how you handle that. Just like when you get attacked by a bear. You just try to make yourself big. And- no, no, no. Like, um, I've seen quite a few videos where there are shadows and there are people are like, you don't scare me, get the fuck out of here. And yeah. Like drive it out of the, out of the room. Hmm. Because, I mean, w- this is the earth plane. We have priority. Mm-hmm. So, fuck them. Yeah. Damn. Just, Just run at it. Zool, motherfucker. Zool. <laughs> <laughs> Occupy its space. Like, fuck off. Yeah. I know it's easier said than done. Now, the next thing that he did makes perfect sense to me. He pissed. I started pissing my pants, and my mind went kind of <laughs> blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. No <laughs> one is going to judge you for that. No, not no, a, not uh, at this particular no, point. These things happen, man. I ran down to the end of the building and finished urinating into the bushes and then ran back inside the classroom. And this time, I didn't care if I woke anybody up. Mm-hmm. I stepped on and tripped over a couple of guys sleeping on the floor as I quickly and carelessly made my way back to my sleeping bag. The following morning, I didn't tell anyone what happened. I was just glad when we all loaded up in the vans and drove back to San Miguel. Uh One night in that village was long Uh enough for me. However, I do want to add that I am grateful to the local people who were kind to us, and I wish them the best. 
The children in that village that were learning Spanish would all be in their 20s now, and I hope they're living happy, fulfilling lives, and I really mean it. That's my paranormal account, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I'll have some time to write again soon and share some hilarious RP stories. Well, thank you very much, Solomon. Uh, yeah, and I had a, a soldier in one of my companies who was a uh, chaplain, chaplain's assistant, mm -hmm. and he was in seminary school, and he used to you know, go to Haiti to, you know, what, what do they call that when they try to, like, recruit more people? For missionary. Missionary. Yeah, yeah missionaries. And uh, he was, he's like, yeah, well, that voodoo shit's fucking real. <laughs> I've seen oh, yeah. some crazy fucking shit. <laughs> oh, I bet you can't explain it. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, God, boy, hook me up with a, a witch doctor. He's like, I will not. I will not. I'm like, I, I, want, I need to have, I need him to put a whammy on somebody. Absolutely not, Sergeant. <laughs> Big That's bucks. That's not going to happen. Big bucks, no whammies, and voodoo. All right. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like, I kept, I pestered him for years. Come on, I want, I want to use the whammy. No. What? No. <laughs> Stop fucking around, Pop. I, I wasn't fucking around. I really wanted to throw the whammy on some people. <laughs> are these people who are, you know, just that bad that they can't even be on the beat on site list? You got to go full well, whammy one, instead? One my ex-wife. <laughs> mm. Shocker! You know, and the other one was Dina. You're going to get sued, man! And there's like one or two other people I would have uh, put the whammy on. The whammy. But uh, he said no, and yeah, what do you got to do? You know, I'm just saying that I don't think whammy is a technical term for the in the voodoo religion, because could you imagine... You know, like Tony Todd and Candyman trying to come out. Like, I think what we need here is a whammy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I sell whammies. 50 gold pieces. Are you out of your fucking whammy? <laughs> You're a crackpot. Get the fuck out of here. I, I'm just, hey, I was in a bad in a bad mental state. I was going to have the whammy put on some people. <laughs> So instead of just, you know, shitting in a Pringles can and mailing it to him, you decided <laughs> to go the supernatural. You know who came up with the term Nammy? Whammy, I mean? No. Walker? He was in my team. He was yeah. always like, yeah, you should just get a witch doctor, put a whammy on her. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yeah, that seems like a legitimate idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to do the witch doctor whammy along with the consigliere thing. <laughs> we'll get a hamster to dress up as a witch doctor. Yeah, but there you go. Yeah. You can maintain your anonymity that way. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get a I'll get an avatar uh, fixed up. I'll have a bone through my nose. And, I'll let uh, my kid know, put you. all the face paint on you. <laughs> nice. There you go. There I you look go. nothing like myself. I feel safe now. <laughs> 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 oh my lord oh uh, that's funny shit speaking of no. funny shit we got a couple more here from none other than iron riddle all right our favorite right. Uh, supplier of rp suppositories and he's what number 451 number 451 exactly all right uh he says please share and this is actually it kind of reminds me of some hp lovecraft stuff the pineal gland was yep. commonly called the third eye for many reasons. If you guys have mm. ever seen the the movie with Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, Ken Foray called uh, From Beyond, adapted from H.P. Lovecraft's work, uh, and the little worm thing comes out of his forehead, that's supposed to be his pineal gland after being stimulated by this resonator machine that allows him to see shit you know, between dimensional lines. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Including its location deep in the center of the brain and its connection to light via the circadian rhythm and melatonin secretion. So there's a reason why we don't have you read this one, Pop. Because <laughs> circadian rhythm and melatonin secretion. I would have. He'd be I, like. <laughs> <laughs> you would have got, got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but then you whip out words like prestidigitation and I'm like. What the. I can't explain it. I can't explain it either. Maybe the witch doctor put the whammy on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe you got the whammy, Bob. Yeah, maybe you I never know. <laughs> maybe I did get the whammy. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammies. Uh, many spiritual traditions believe it serves as a connection between the physical and spiritual worlds. Mm, Autopsies okay. performed on infants show this gland to be vibrant, and those of adults reveal them to be shriveled and darkish in color. Also hmm. revealed is that adults who are spiritual or religious of any level have less dead, in quotes, pineal glands. 
It is said that those who practice any type of religion have pineal glands that are more alive and are able to see things in the supernatural better than others can. This is why children tend to see things that adults don't. When adults tell the children that what they see is not real, they begin to tune out their third eye. This is why some children have what adults call imaginary friends. But are they really imaginary? Yeah, it's a very good question. My son, when he was really young, he used to have night terrors quite a bit. Um, a lot of people believe that that's leftover over remnants from past lives. Yep. And mm-hmm. oftentimes we would see him staring and maintaining consistent eye contact with something that wasn't there. Yep. He'd <laughs> wave at it, talk to it, babble at it, what have you. Really? When we were up north, which was my dad's favorite place to be, it happened a lot. Okay. <laughs> way, way more than I thought it would. Yeah. Well, my youngest daughter would do similar things yep. at my mother's house. Mm-hmm. Dogs, too, will often bark at things that are not there. Yep. They're not mm-hmm. always barking at leaves. Uh, he continues here. It reminds me of the story of the dog that was thrown into an insane asylum because he was telling all the other dogs about seeing rainbows and dogs are colorblind. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put the whammy on him. Uh, yeah. I was about five years old and lying in my bed looking at the ceiling. A man that had to duck to get through my bedroom door and a shoulder width nearly as wide as the door. Oh, no. He walked into my room over to the dresser, looked in the mirror, knocking a few things down onto the floor then over to the closet and looked inside, then over to my bed, hitting his head on the ceiling light fixture. He bent at the waist and stared down at me. Oh, shit. This man had the head of a horse with brown fur and the body of a man. I could hear him breathing and was only slightly afraid until he nodded at me and the fear was gone. (sighs) And after a few minutes, he disappeared. I (laughs) told my parents all about it and they blew it off as a bad dream and told me to forget it. Six months ago, my LTR, who is very religious and spiritual Christian who embraces many practices of ancient times, practices that have been condemned by the Catholic Church, mind you, Uh she told me that she saw an abrasion in the master bathroom. She described it to a T as the man horse from my youth. Oh, wow. And I had never shared (laughs) with her my story. She saw him for just a few seconds, and then he disappeared. And after I shared my story with her, we sat down with my rune stones to try to get some answers. And when I asked him his name, it spelled out the Guardian. Ah. Hmm. That's cool. Kooky. <laughs> yeah. Mysterious and spooky. Altogether <laughs> ooky. Yeah. Uh, I myself <laughs> have never had anything like that happen. Mm. So, yeah, that, no. uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure if he meant abrasion or apparition, but it was probably apparition. He, he yeah. wrote abrasion, so I just. That's, that's fine. <laughs> Hit an abrasion in the master bath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, look, do I think there are guardian spirits out there? I think everyone has one. Mm. Um, I've never seen mine, I've only heard it. And it was the first time I ever heard it. I was drag racing. On the impact area on Fort Lewis, I had already pegged. Like you do. <laughs> I had already pegged the speedometer, and I, the front of the Camaro was starting to do this. <laughs> I was going <laughs> yeah. so fast, and then it started doing the shuddering. You know, it'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as plain as day, I heard this voice like somebody came out of the back seat and it spoke in my ear, like, "If you keep doing this, you're gonna." Die. You're gonna die, and I was like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> "That was yep. the last time I ever drag raced that like that again." Yeah, that was it. Mm, yeah, and the guy was racing two weeks later. He was with another dude. Totaled their car. Ooh. None of them died, but oh. they, one they they both had complimentary broken legs, mm. meaning mm. they had to cut. They crawled together, took their belts off. Belted their leg, their broken legs together, and then they, they walked like <laughs> they, they walked. hobbled oh, back God. three miles to like the, oh, the main shit. MSR where the MPs found them. Oh shit, man! Put those guys in the potato sack race. I know. <laughs> and the doctor was working on him. He's like, "You guys are lucky you're only fucking nineteen, or you'd be dead." <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one before. Yeah. Woo. <clears throat> 
Yeah. I've often wondered, you know, because the uh, if you're Catholic, you're supposedly you have a guardian angel, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I often wonder sometimes if you ever done this, you're getting ready for work or whatever, right? And you're going to go out on the highway or some shit. You can't find your keys or you can't find your wallet or something. Yeah. Mm. And so you're, you're delayed by 30 seconds or a, ha- or a minute or something. Have you ever thought <laughs> maybe that's your guardian angel fucking with you? It's like, look, if you go right now, some something bad's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm going to hide your wallet. Yeah. You know, you're what? not going to know it. I'm going to hide. I'm going to put it somewhere and then you're going to have to find it and you're going to be out of that shit. I don't know if that. You know what? Maybe. I'll tell you this, though. Even if that's complete hokum, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think that's a very good thing to keep in mind when things get delayed because people get pissed off over the dumbest yep. shit. They will spin themselves up yep. into an mm-hmm. evil pop frenzy over yep. practically nothing. It's because they, they haven't been taught the mantra. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. I can't or if it. you're driving on the road, it's once they're behind me, they don't exist. That's right. Listen, I, I should probably do an episode of all the mental tricks I have to do just to live. Yeah. Mm, yeah, because every day, because of the PTSD and all this shit, I gotta play these funny mind games with myself. To... <laughs> it's just nuts, man. Speaking of nuts, we got one more here from Iron Riddle. He sent us a couple of short ones. All right. Okay. Um, so here we go. Children are more in tune to the supernatural and paranormal than adults. Of course they are. I would yeah. agree. My son, who was about four, would get a black sharpie and draw on his wall next to his bed. These weren't pictures of anything, mostly abstract drawings. <clears throat> With a mild scolding and asking him why, he told me, it's to keep the monsters out. Monsters? Yeah, monsters in the wall. I'm more tuned into the paranormal than my parents ever were who tried to beat the devil out of me. Uh-huh. So I paid attention to what my son was telling me. Especially after my three-year-old daughter started talking about the dragon in the wall and holding her hand up like a claw and saying, rawr. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll get your attention. Because I'm going to tell you right oh. now, if I walk in there and a young one of my children is writing on the wall, I'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, you're drawing a portrait of yourself getting an ass whipped <laughs> 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 it's su- it's surprisingly accurate. You should put more red in it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yep. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, he continues here. One afternoon, I was in that room. Oh, okay, now I'm starting to get a little a uh, little tingly from this one here. Okay. Okay. I heard scratching on the inside of the walls, and the size of an animal to make that kind of scratching would in no way fit inside the hollows of the drywall. Correct. Mm. This was starting to get creepy. Starting! <laughs> starting to get creepy. Okay, I'm trying to like massage out my goosebumps here. Over the next few months, my son still managed to find a Sharpie adding to his wall art to keep the monsters at bay. Then the day came where my LTR was in that room reading a book and heard the scratching. Then the head of the cr- of a critter morphed out of the wall to its shoulders right above my son's bed. Oh, my God. Oh, she described it as looking similar to the gremlins from the movie, only brown and gray in color and not green. Wow. <laughs> now, my LTR is very familiar with the supernatural and got up to go after it. I heard her from the other room, Fuck off, demon! Get out of my house! And leave my family alone! I'll drink to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. All day long on that one. Woo. I ran into the room and said, I'm not going anywhere. I live here. <laughs> 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 That's not funny, she said. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. What are we going to do? At that point, I could still hear the scratching in the wall. I said, well, we need to cleanse the house. Yeah. If to bless the house and have it yes. cleansed, maybe have the actual... Uh, 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 Catholic priests come by and do all that stuff? Yes. Yeah. And that usually will take care of it unless it's Amityville bad. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know. yeah. or the um, the individual mm-hmm. is uh, not, the house is haunted, yeah. not the individual. Yeah. But typically what what, what they're talking about is uh, it, it's an infestation. Mm. Uh, evil infestates a place and then it Wears you, tries to wear you down to the point where it can possess you. Yep. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, really good. It's pretty insidious. That's a, in that respect, I would say at least the first Paranormal Activity film, they got that pretty much dead nuts. Well, uh, there's this new film out now. This. Uh, Vatican exorcist thing. Oh, I want to see the Pope's yeah. exorcist. Yeah, the Pope's. Yeah, I want to see that. And then there's another one coming out called Nefarious, I believe. I, I saw a trailer for it. it looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, he says here, I got out some paper and drew King Solomon's symbol of protection. It looks like a complex version of the Star of David, I'm and taped it to that. the wall in the place the demon came out. I then spoke a prayer of protection over my son, the wall, and the house. A few days later, my son took the drawing down, and concerned, I asked him why he took it down, to which he said, Monster's gone. All right. <laughs> Good. But <laughs> a but. few days later, uh-huh. my son took the drawing down, and concerned, I'm sorry, uh, but a few days later, I heard the scratching again. Oh. I repeated the above process with three symbols this time in places he couldn't reach. It's been a year now, and the critter has not been back. Good. Wow. Woo! That is some creepy Ooh. ass shit right there. Yes. Now, it is. I, fortunately, I never had to deal with that personally myself. No. I don't think I'd ever enjoy that. Um, yeah, if I heard like giant claws scratching inside of my wall, I might move. <laughs> yeah. Th- that would be a little weird, yeah. I mean, you, sometimes you hear mice and shit, but that's yes. not a major monster, right? No, no, like mice, you can tell. They, they sound like fingernails it's scratching like, on a table. Yeah. 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 yeah no big deal. You're like little bit of paper crumbling. I don't know, man. That, uh, yeah, that sounds just like an infestation. It does. It sounds very, very bad. Woo, some good stuff tonight, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And there's Love infestation, it. domination, and then possession. Yes. And we do have some uh, super chats here. All right. Get to. I'm sure we got some some stories from the chat as well, so I'm going to... Jump on over to that. First things first come from L. Snows. He wants the old printer sound effect. <laughs> and one of these. Oh! Ah! <laughs> you Black, just the way your ex will like. Hey, you're going to get me too. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Hey, you're the one who tried to put the witch doctor whammy on her. Hey, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Got a galaxy you can't far, get sued for that. <laughs> hey, you never know. If words are violence and silence is violence, whammies... <laughs> Well, <laughs> just ask the leftoids. Hey. They can totally make it make sense. Right? <laughs> right. Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. Gender norms, they're so outdated, and we need to just move beyond them. Oh, my God. Your son picked up a Barbie. He must be a girl. Uh, make it make sense, leftoids. Make it make oh, sense. First, first of all, when you look at the, like all of the symbols and all the bullshit that the left has now. They all look mm. like satanic it's, bullshit. That's exactly why I asked for a copy of all of these symbols for all these different uh, mm-hmm. so-called genders. Yep. And it, it literally looks like some kind of uh, magic script. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, the, they, them, we, and us, in the Bible, demons talk They go like by that. we, yeah. They talk yep. us, we, they, that's how they talk. Yep. So, I am I am legion because we are many. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's something going on somewhere. Yeah, we need to. I, I want to say there was a Stephen King short story or something like that called "Storm of the Century." Once upon a time, yeah. where he he used the uh, the anagram Linoge, which is legion with you know the letters rearranged. Yeah, and they and it was a that. wizard that came back to get his apprentice. Yep. Yeah, I and love originally that. the the title of Exorcist Three was Legion. Uh huh. It wasn't supposed to be an Exorcist sequel, which a lot of people don't know. Uh. Uh, originally, it was all Brad Dourif, and the studio insisted that they have an Exorcist sequence and brought in you know Father, you know yeah, what's yeah. his name from the first one. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> hey, they want to make money. I got you. I guess so. No, but uh, I mean that's that's a very interesting point, though, Pop. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, I that's a lot of possessed people. We are or the, we them. The yeah. Like, yeah, that's fucking. My and pronouns are they them. Okay, you demonic dick slinger. Exactly. And, and what are you doing? You infested with Jesus. the way that the the demonic works is it dominates the weak minded. Well then, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, we're well, in no short supply in this country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that, that, that's pretty much how it works. I mean, the people who get dominated are usually weak minded individuals. Oh, this is too funny. Shark Denture says so. We have Borg, Borg Blake, 
Demon Pop and Ginger Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought you know by turning off the main key lights it would look kind of spooky and paranormal in here, but apparently I am I am the Borg. <laughs> Lower your shields and surrender your ships. <laughs> you, we we will assimilate. We, we will, will assimilate. assimilate. Yeah. We will ass emulate you. Emphasis <laughs> on ass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Resistance yes. is futile. <laughs> Uh, we got Bone Dust Crew. Still have my Navy ghost story from around Halloween. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, Bone Dust Crew, if you could send that over again, I'm not sure if I ever received that. Yeah. Uh, send it to Redonculus Blake at Gmail. Um, I, I have so many tags for different kinds of things that people send me, but I try to make sure that I keep everything organized. Uh, not a band account. Where do babies come from? The tip of your penis. They come from the no no. They come from that one commando sperm. <laughs> yeah, that one guy. Yeah. Yeah. That swims, the winds the overall it swims through an ocean, crawls through a mile of barbed wire, yep. and then attacks the objective. Yep. And there, that's how you got here. It's the one trans swimmer at the women's meet just going right now. <laughs> <laughs> it always has to make it to the objective. Yep. Oh, too soon. Uh Polska Bob. Hamster slam a six pack. Now mm. Now do it. Do it now. No. And don't Gotta forget to eat. Have you done that before, like streamed and slammed a six-pack? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I've been missing out yeah. there. Okay. Not slammed, but, you know, uh, yeah. Slowly ingested <clears throat> over the Almost period of a stream. Fall, fall asleep, you know, that kind of thing. As long as it's not Bud Light, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. I'm not proud of it. Just it slow happens. motion gender reassignment It's surgery. not a big deal. <laughs> Beer is not no, a big I'm, deal. Uh, I already, I already got myself some Yingling here. Oh so, hell yeah. yeah! We can, we can get it now here in Missouri. They just All brought right. it in like a month they ago. They need so. to bring that here. It's family owned and operated since like yep. the 1800s, and they sell a black and tan in a single bottle. It's fucking delicious. Yep, yep. love Yingling. It. Every time I go to Ohio, I always pick up a 12 pack and bring it home. I think they're expanding to Michigan, but it's I think sometime oh. this year. But oh, please, yeah. please do! I hope they so. Do. Hopefully, they don't they don't sell out and get shitty because they're. I, I just had some over the weekend. It's still pretty good. Yeah, it's really it's good. Very tasty. Yeah. Uh, not a band account again. Says our state property tax is unconstitutional. Well, listen, we're gonna have to readdress a lot of that shit. Um, because the way it is set up now is they tell you to your face you own the property, but if you don't pay the taxes on it, you don't own it. Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so that needs to be addressed. That is some stupid-ass shit right there. Uh, Sean St. George, to this day, I still make sure to see my son's chest rise and fall when he sleeps. Yep. Yep, Yep, I I read to my son every night, make sure that he goes off to sleep. I always put my hand on his chest, tell him I love him, and I go to bed. There you go. Uh, Speaking evils. of taxes, you guys, I know this is a slightly different topic, but you uh, brought it up, Bob. Today's tax day. <clears throat> we, have, we have a personal property fucking tax in Missouri. Personal so you got to send in tax. a form, and you, yeah, they charge you a tax on your car or anything like that. Boat. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, what it, the it fuck? is ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Wow. Even Flat the farmers get hosed. The farmers rarely get hosed. They're usually coddled pretty well. Ugh. But in Missouri, you got to pay property, personal property tax in your farming tools. Well, what if, if wow. you consider coddled being under the gun of the government because of their well, subsidies to basically do whatever the hell I, I they you. want. Yeah, I, yeah, I know you. that yeah. you could sell this, but burn your crops so that mm. we can manufacture a food shortage or we'll fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. thanks. That's only going to last for so long. Exactly. And, and yeah. I don't want to get in. I don't want to get into too deep into that subject and get balls right. deep into because that we're subject. talking about paranormal shit today uh, yeah. evil zombie toe says sounds like you found yggdrasil on the way to valhalla if that's how it's even pronounced i've never seen that word before in my life y-g-g-d-r-a-s-i-l yeah please send us a definition of that word I yeah it's interesting i don't know what that is Alex Patino, hey, Pop, there are cool books out there that might appeal to you, such as the 1632 series by Eric Flint and alternative history genre or transmigration. Huh. Yeah. As long as it's not about those particular transmigrations. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to be involved in that bullshit. Leave our kids alone. Yep. 
Uh, Smooth Criminal, hey guys, look up the NGV's Gen 1 with the red light instead of green. Vietnam vets so demons and they got recalled and phased out. They're talking about the NVGs, night yeah. vision goggles. Oh, okay. He said NGV, so it was backwards. Yeah. Oh, the red ones, they could see demons? Is that right? They saw demons oh. with those? That's fucked up. Well, hmm. they have, uh, there's, the uh, first generation night vision had a infrared light that would shine, and then you would see as, as far as the infrared worked. Hmm. And now it, the, oh, the Gen 2 and 3, uh, you still have the option where you can turn on the infrared light, but it's so sensitive you can turn that off, and if there's enough stars and, and moon or whatever, it, it you don't even need the, red, the infrared light anymore. Nice. Um, let me see here. Uh, Yggdrasil is the world tree from which all the nine realms branch out. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. that's world the tree. great tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Lord Messiah Disciple with love and a smiley emoji, James Hamster 07. Hello. Hello. Uh, Evil Zombie Toe, I have to mention this. I knew an oldie six who was on his seventh marriage. Oh. Last oh. time I saw him, it hadn't even been three months before he regretted his new wife and his three <sighs> new stepkids. Mm. Yep. Mm. And and oh, one of the boy. main reasons, at wow. least this is just one of my observations about these men who get married multiple times. They they have a a void within them that they're trying to fill. Yeah. And it and yeah. it's it never works. It, it, you need to figure out. You need to source why you feel that way first before mm -hmm. you decide that you want to. Uh, you know, donate half your shit away just like you did the other times before. Yeah, if you have an insatiable need mm -hmm. to have someone else around, evaluate that. Yeah, well, I also have a friend of mine whose wife passed away, and they were married for a long, long time. Well, that's different. And then he got remarried because he was just used to being in that. Yeah. Sure. Which is totally acceptable. I mean, yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, I, I can cut a guy some uh, slack for that stuff. But six times. I mean, how long are you even giving any of these Yeah, Yeah, and, and it's so stupid because, like, I've seen soldiers do this too. They, they go to the whore tree. They shake it. A whore comes down. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they walk off with a whore. They marry her. They do all kinds <laughs> of crazy stuff. It or doesn't work out. Do they learn? No. They go nope. right back to the horror tree, shake it for the next one. Yeah. Oh, this is this one's even better. And they walk yeah. off. It, it oh my God. Yeah. Woo! You want to talk about serial horror tree shaking? That's just ridiculous. Uh Sean St. George says, note to self, never put a large mirror at the end of a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Good yeah. call. I always just turn away from it when I <laughs> Uh, G-Man, I have a paranormal story, perhaps, about three years after my mother's death, how I avoided death. Mother's green eyes, two green streaking stars. Send it on over, man. Yeah. Dung is fun. Every time I hear a legion, I get goosebumps and shakes. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. it's a good yeah, reason for I that. I get the same thing with the word doom. Doom. Uh, Tony Soprano, you guys ever hear about the Sally House? Mm -hmm. What's that? Sally House. That's a house where um, there was a little girl named Sally who lived in there, and she viciously attacked the male, the eldest male in there, and then shit would set on fire. And I saw that on um, unexplained uh, phenomena years ago, just out of nowhere. How old was this girl? Uh, the the pictures the psychic drew was between four and five years old. Whoa, that's crazy. If that's the that same up. one, I mean that that's. That's what? like some Michael Myers shit right there. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this was a five-year-old kid that did all the killing here. You saying? No, no. Well, it was this. It was an evil spirit that oh, put, the spirit. put okay. forward an image of a of a young child. Oh, mm, gotcha. okay. And like stuff would burst into flame around the house from time to time. The guy was getting viciously scratched up at night. Damn. And they literally had the camera in the room. The guy pulled his shirt up. You could watch the welts form, the blood start coming down. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Well, oh you got to send me these videos. These sound crazy. Uh, Demaster12 says, Demons' pronouns are we and us because they're collectivists. If you'd like, I could write you another Bishop Demaster sermon to explain further. Yes. Yes. Do it. Yep. 
Uh, Chris L. Sasser, what is your favorite army issued rifle? <sighs> <laughs> I think I just heard him get an erection. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will have to say the M24 sniper rifle. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I was at my best behind that hog leg. That, that thing, it was like, literally, it was a magic wand of death. Magic wand of death. Was, I love that thing. Awesome. Uh, Bone Dust Crew sent his ghost story, and it's nice and short, so we're going to read it to you right here before we get to the last chat and then take a break and go to new tech. All right. Uh, let me see here. Halloween 2020, the weirdest year of my life. July 7th, 2020, at some point after 2030 hours that night. My watch had ended for the night. I just eat a delicious hamster at the mess deck. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. <laughs> oh, no. Did you finish in his mouth? <laughs> 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 so I went down to Maine, too, to see my friend who was on watch there. You see, there's a reason why we didn't read this back when you first sent it is because we were waiting to make this joke in the presence right. of this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I went down to Maine, too, to see my friend who was on watch as I hadn't seen him in a few days and mainly wanted to go over some engineering lookups from my ESWS board because this guy really knows his shit. Wound up hanging out down there for the remainder of his watch, about four hours or so. We've been talking about ESWS topics, hunting, boot camp, past experiences, that sort of thing. When my friend looks to his right and up over by what I'm pretty sure is one of the GTMs, unless it was the GTG that's in there as well. Then he looks back and said he thought he saw someone there, but there wasn't. We kept talking about whatever else for a good 20 minutes or more at least when I see it too. Out of the out of the corner of your eye. Top corners of my eyes, non-descriptive entity in unmistakable blue coveralls. Yeah, I that, is, it. that is exceptionally common. Yeah, but when I look toward it, it's nothing. Uh -huh. We discussed what it might be for not five minutes and continued on and forgot about it. I forgot it happened until my shift started the next day. That's what I wrote the next morning. The ghost was a stocky dude with brown curly hair. He looked a lot like a GSE-3 on the ship, but most definitely wasn't. He could kick the door off a shitter stall. He could not dematerialize at will. It was probably just residual. The ghost was walking a PCM's roving watch. That ship had suffered three deaths, two suicides, one accident over the course of her service. Uh -huh. I think the most recent was about seven-ish years prior to that de deployment. I don't know, OOD sent the other watchstanders on errands, stepped into the OOD shack beside the quarter deck, and shot himself. Ooh. Some would say strange things would happen there. Nothing ever did to me, though, but I only ever went in there quick for a life vest or hard hat, something like that. Quick, though. Uh -huh. The next morning, I told the senior sailor in passing about it, and she told me that happens a lot in the Navy, especially during full moons on the lower decks of the ship, even more so especially in engineering spaces, because that is where fires, other mishaps, and deaths are the most likely to happen on a ship. Uh -huh. She went on to tell me that she'd been in LHA once on a lower deck near Laundry when black shadows started crawling all over the bulkheads. And after what I saw, I'll buy it. Yeah. Jesus. Woo. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those uh, apparition stories that I'm you know, going to do a show on are virtually all from military installations. Yeah. The one that really freaked me out and I'm just I'm not I'm going to tell the story but uh, not the whole thing here. But this is a guy who was drafted for Korea, wound up going into the Air Force, and then he didn't go to Korea. They sent him to one of those boneyards where they put all of the old aircraft for parts. Mm -hmm. Sure. And uh, this is the 50s, so there's still World War II shit in there. And uh, there's three guys, because um, he would work an eight-hour shift. Another guy would come in and do an eight-hour shift. All of the people at one point or time literally saw one of the B-17s that still had the crew inside the cockpit, like, moving around and shit. Jesus. And apparently, you know... During World War II, like 38,000 airmen were eradicated during the air war. 
Hmm. So, I mean, I, I, it's, that one is actually going to be pretty good. It's pretty scary. Ooh. Sounds like good times to me. Yeah. Well, not good times, but you know what I mean. And there was another one where the Marine is uh, he's near the end of his watch. It's like 11 o'clock. He's waiting for his relief. He thinks he sees his relief walking up. So he's like, hey, motherfucker, what's going on? And as soon as he looks at him, he's not even fucking there. He's like, yep. Uh-oh. Haunted. Mother fornicator. <laughs> Very haunted. All right, we got one last YouTube chat here. Then we're going to take a quick break to empty our squirrel bladders, jump over to New Tech, and read the really juicy chats. And as has been the case for the last two weeks, Rumble is out doing YouTube again. What are we at on YouTube? We are at 552 on YouTube with 726 on Rumble. Wow. You guys are awesome. New tech is where it's at. All right. Last one here is from Shark Denture. It says, demons say we are, God says I am, point made. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Exactly. Makes sense to me. All right, ladies and germs. Uh, Jimmy Bones, if you're there, please paste the links to the other new tech channels in the chat on YouTube. We're going to be taking a quick break for the next five minutes to empty our squirrel bladders, refill our menageries, and then we're going to jump on over to new tech and really get into the, some juicy comments. We may have some more ghost stories. I don't quite know yet. Yeah, listen, uh, I mean, we went through an hour and a half and went like that. Yeah. Because these stories, yeah. man, they just that's why I, I wanted it nice and dark in here, so we could really show just how much Pop Sex loved the blacks. Huh? <laughs> You're going to get me sued, <laughs> man. Come on. Stop. Oh, 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 oh no. Jesus what? I really had to do that one more time. <laughs> but <laughs> and what can I say? I'm an asshole. All right. All right. I'm glad you guys have been tuning in with us over there. Jump on over to New Tech if you haven't yet, because you know what? It's just flat out better, especially if you go to MGTOW.TV. Just look in the chat. Yep. I'm going to tell you right now. Just look Mm -hmm. in the chat if you don't believe me. And uh, once you do, you're never going to want to leave. Because once you see crack, you never go back. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You going to stick with us, hamster, or are you going to take off? I'll stay. I'll stay if I'm welcome. You better. Hell Hell yeah, yeah, man. You're always welcome here. Uh, Crack open another out of the six-pack then, and we'll see you in five minutes. All right. Sounds good. All right.